The name's Wizard. Car Wizard. Welcome, Wizard. Please come in. I just finished a top secret mission for Her Majesty the Queen. And in typical Bond fashion, I've done so with an Aston Martin Vanquish. It's a beautiful, beautiful car. If you're going to have to shoot someone, why not do it in an Aston Martin Vanquish? Uh, this is getting kind of hot. And really, something doesn't feel quite right. Okay, well this looks kind of goofy and it's time to get this thing off of me. Definitely not car wizard fashion. Welcome back to the wizard shop. This time it's a British edition. We have a British invasion here. This is a car that was just purchased by one of my customers. It's, he's only had it a few days and it's beautiful. You guys heard it when it drove in. It's a, it's a V12. It's an absolutely beautiful car. The smell inside is intoxicating. The leather is just wonderful. I'm going to tell you guys a little bit about the car and then we're going to put it on the lift and give it a quick check over. I'm going to be giving a more in-depth inspection later on during the week, but we're just going to do a quick check over and let you guys see what it looks like underneath one of these. So, this is a 2003 Aston Martin Vanquish. It has the 6 liter V12. It has the ASM transmission, which is what Jeremy Clarkson calls flappy paddles. It's kind of like a Maserati Quattroporte, the way it works. It has an auto mode, but you can also drive it, shift it yourself with the paddles. And like I said, it has a V12. It has 460 horsepower. Very fast, very powerful. Just a little bit on the street when I was first driving in here, I just gave it a little gas and it, it broke loose. It was amazing, amazing power in this car. The zero to 60 is five seconds, probably 4.9 or 4.8, probably more along the lines. Top speed 190. And I would think it may be even be able to do more than that. The actual prototype for this car, when they were designing it, was driven in a James Bond movie, Die Another Day. If you watch that movie, you can see the actual prototype for the Aston Martin Vanquish. This was introduced in 2001, and they stopped production of Generation 1, or Gen 1, as people say, in 2007. The model that it replaced is the Virage. The Vanquish replaced the Virage. Here's the real cool thing about this car. It literally has 20,000 miles on it. It's not as low mileage as Hoovy's recent acquisition, his Gallardo, with only 3,900 something miles on it. But 20,000, that's still brand new. Unfortunately, we're going to have to go through and do all the fluids and everything because even though the mileage is low, the years are not. When this was new, this was a $223,000 car. Today, you can get them between 60, 75, maybe 80 tops for one of these. So it's a quarter of what it was new. So if you're in the market for a car like this, you could pick one up that's not real old for way cheap. But the cost to repair one of these and the parts prices will soon make up for the savings that you had when you first purchased the vehicle. You can easily put 10 grand into one of these getting it right. This was during the years that Ford owned Aston Martin, 1987 to 2007. It's a kind of a little gap there of Ford ownership. But anyways, enough of chit-chat about the car. Let's take a look underneath. Let's get it on the lift. It'll take me a little bit to get it on the lift, but the first thing I want to show you guys, how do you start one of these cars? You have a key in your hand. You don't just jump in and crank the key like a Porsche or something. I'm going to show you guys the starting procedure. It's pretty interesting. So we put the key in. We turn it. Nothing. That's not how you start this car. You see it's flashing one. It's telling you it's in first gear. 
it is not going to start in first gear. You also have to make sure your brake is engaged, which it, which it is. It's kind of like the old Jags. You have to pull it all the way up, click the button, and then down. So being that it's in first gear, we need to get it into neutral. And this is common on Ferraris and Maseratis, but you click both paddles together. Now we're in neutral. You also seen the engine start light up. I'll show that again. Now it's not lit up. It's not ready to start. Now it is. You put your foot on the brake. Start it up. If you want to go into reverse, you push the button. When you're done with reverse, back to the paddles again. Now we can go in forward, first gear. Just like that. When you're going to turn off the car, neutral again. I'm going to take the brake off to show you guys. You turn it off with the key. But it won't let you have the key yet. Why not? Because we don't have the parking brake on. There we go. Now we can have our key back. This isn't a car that you just hop in and turn the key and hit the gas. There's quite of a procedure to get things going right. So. Hey, car wizard, how are you going to get this on the lift if it's in the parking brakes on and you need to be in neutral to get it on the lift? I'm going to turn the key on put the parking brake off and put it in neutral. It, it, it will allow that, but I won't turn the engine on. So we turn the key on. It's in first gear. Now we put it in neutral. Take the parking brake off. We don't touch anything else when we get out. Once we get it located and get it lifted a few inches off the ground, then we can turn everything back off and it'll be back happy again. Okay, here we go. Everything looks good. Now I'm going to turn the car off and get the key out. First thing we're going to do is take down this metal plate so we can take a look at the engine. We're just going to be looking for any leaks, anything broken. I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to do more in-depth inspection of checking all the fluids and going through all the fluids later on. But right now, just letting you guys see what's underneath of a Aston Martin Vanquish. We're going to look together to see if there's any broken pieces, any missing pieces, severe leaks. Those are questions that haven't been answered yet. So let's go ahead and start with getting this panel off. We're not going to be taking all the panels off this time around. I will be doing that later. We're just going to take this forward panel off to look at the powertrain. So the first thing that I'm seeing, even though it's only got 20,000 miles, is a lot of these bolts. This pan has been off and bolts have been lost. We got eight millimeters I just took off. Now I have to switch over to a 10 to get the other bolts off. They're all mismatched. There's a series of Phillips screws along this wheel liner. We'll have to get those off real quick. So 
so we got the first panel off. It's just cheap metal. Most exotic cars I work on, that would be plastic or fiberglass or something. One thing I did like about this, as opposed to like a Ferrari 360, the jack points, they have cutouts in the sheet metal, so when you get the bolts out, the cover comes off. On the 360, the jack points sit in a hole, so when you get all the bolts loose on the rear in engine belly cover, you had to physically raise the car off the jack points to get the cover out. It was pretty crazy. That didn't happen here, I'm glad. So we got that panel off, and guess what we found? Another one. It looks like Fort Knox. I'd have to say the car's built very well, almost too well. Do we need to get that off so we can see the engine? Okay, so we got the plate off, and there's two bolts that hold this transmission oil pump to the plate. You can't just pull the pan down, you'll, you gotta undo those bolts. And I zip tied it up so it's not hanging by its hoses. But now we can get a little bit better look underneath the engine. You can see these hoses are leaking. All this here you see is nothing wrong with the pump. This is the hoses there, you can see my hand just oil seeping through the hoses. Let's start with the wheels up here. Take a look. Brake pads are good. Nothing loose there. Uh-oh. Got a loose sway bar link there. Let's see. Go over to the other side. Brakes look good, nothing loose there. Let's try this sway bar link. That one's tight. They just need to get one. The rack boot looks good, not torn or leaking. This rack boot looks good. The rack's not leaking. This is the steering rack. This long aluminum piece here. Right above you is the engine oil pan. It's nice and dry, that's great. There's some catalytic converters wrapped in heat shields. So I see the oil hose was leaking up there on the transmission oil pump. I don't see any, anything else leaking really. Look through here at the radiator. You can see the radiator side tank through there. Everything looks dry. Let's check over here. Looking all the way up, it looks dry. And we can look through here, through the fans, and we can look at the radiator. We see no, there's no gouges, there's no holes. No green or pink stains from the coolant leaking. Well, that looks good. See the belt here? The belt looks aged. It doesn't look bad, just aged. We'll probably replace it anyway, because it's probably original. I see a small antifreeze boot up there. Both of them are bulging. We'll probably need to replace those. It's just a small section of and, or coolant hose, basically. Here we have the, the ASM transmission. It says Dexron 3, ATF only. I don't see anything leaking other than that hose we saw up front. Uh-oh. Here we have some leaky leaks. It's looking like to me, this is a little valve block assembly. 
either there's a loose line or these copper washers are leaking. Nothing's really wet up above these fittings, these banjo fittings. This pressure sensor could be leaking. And as you go on back, you can see everything's covered in panels. We can get a quick look at the back wheels. It needs brake pads in the back. They're about three quarters gone. Sway bar links are fine there. Nothing loose there. We go to the other side. Sway bar links tight there. Again, the brake pads in the back need to be replaced. CV shaft boots are dry and clean. The shocks don't have oil all over them, which is good. Yep, CV shaft boots are clean. Go back up here. The shocks are good. I do see a boot torn up here on the upper control arm. It'll probably need a new upper control arm. Let's check the other side. Same story. I can see the boots separated. So underneath all I'm really seeing is some basic little suspension components, uh, con the control arm boots, there's the, a few leaks on the valve block assembly we saw, there's a hose leaking on the oil pump up front. I don't really see anything major disastrous expensive wrong not yet anyway. Is it? And again, as I said, we're just doing a basic check over for guys to take a look at this. Uh, we're going to go ahead and lower it down and take a look at the top of the engine. Now the suspension on this is not electronic. There's not a bunch of gizmos and ride heights and all these different things. So I can just lift it without really pushing any buttons or having to disable anything. We're going to leave that, that belly pan that we took off, those pans, we're going to leave those off because we're going to continue to work on it, continue to inspect it. It's not going to be good driven out in the street. It's going to stay in here and continue to get worked on, so we're going to leave those off. I did notice the tires are bad, but the, the owner already knows about that, and there's already plans in the works to get new tires, so let's take a look under here. Hand built in England. Final inspection by Thomas Clark. Engine number 1113. Thank you, Thomas Clark, for inspecting the engine. Here's these boots. They're bulging. Whether or not that's normal, it doesn't look right. One thing that catches my eye is that you can see that at the factory they use these slip style clamps. But over here we have AutoZone clamps. And there's some leak going on there. So this hose will probably need to be replaced, so we get a proper clamp top and bottom. Take a look around for any valve cover gasket leaks, and I don't see anything leaking really. A delicate little pipes there. And these match up to these vents here, let heat out of the engine out of the engine bay. Pretty ingenious design. Air filters over here. Probably is access through the wheel liner, I would imagine. Carbon fiber. Carbon fiber strut brace. Very nice. Let's go over here and take a look. Engine oil is full and clean. Brake fluid's full. We're going to be going through all these fluids anyway, but I'm just making seeing if, if this been being driven. It was extremely low for whatever reason. Or a little antifreeze reservoir. Looks good. Power steering. I'm 
must have put a spell on that car wizard. It's nice and full. It's dirty. Brown. That needs to be flushed and changed. Whenever I find stuff that's extremely hard to get off, that tells me one thing. It hasn't been checked in a long time. Here's the windshield washer fluid. I'm not too worried about that. Let's take a look at the interior and we'll be done. you guys take a look around in there. It's very fancy, very beautiful. I love the color scheme. Caramel colored leather. Very, very nice inside of here. There's the Aston Martin cell phone. It's pretty rare to find the original phone still in the car from 03. Looks like an old StarTac phone. This is a two-seater. It's not for four people. Looks like it needs some work on the headliner, which will be taken care of. There'll be some body work and some upholstery work. And the owner of this car is going to get it like brand new. He's going to get it everything back perfect so that's a nice looking subwoofer back there and some speakers very nice well thanks for going along with us on the tour of the Aston Martin Vanquish very beautiful car I look forward to getting it back in tip-top shape for the owner it doesn't look like it's going to be anything extravagantly expensive or stupidly hard to, to repair it runs and drives perfectly fine if there's any tools or anything you see in previous videos you're interested in purchasing, you can check those out in our Amazon affiliates. If you haven't subscribed already, hit the subscribe button. We're getting up there in the subscribers. We crossed the 130,000 mark, and I'm real appreciative to you guys for that. We also have t-shirts, and, and we also have hats for sale now, and coffee mugs and things of that nature. There will be many more cars coming through the shop, which means many more cool videos to come. Keep watching, and tell your friends to subscribe. Thanks for watching.